Well, my name is Dr. Christine Hover. I work in a nursing department and I have been blessed with being able to present this content to folks today. I have worked in um, Sakad for about eight years now and so I'm excited every year to be able to be part of Sakad. and so we're rolling out more of what is Sakad and how do we prepare Sakad and how do we do things better for Sakad. and so as faculty we've been volunteering to present different topics and today happens to be my topic. It's talking about winning over the reviewers. You saw the handout that the library sent out. It talked about Sakad presentation guidelines and so that win over the reviewers, just a catchy title to have a little bit of ownership to something a little unique. So I'd like to begin by asking, hi, sorry, oh, where is that handout from? Um, this one, it's the one that came out from the library, the library sent it out on email masses. Okay. It's like page two, and, and there, it looks right out of there. Okay. Should it come out in email masses for people? I wanted to start by by inter or meeting you guys. So you've met me. I'm Chris. People inform informally call me Chris. Starting so if you're an undergraduate or graduate, what your discipline is, and then what was one expectation you had from today's presentation. We'll start with Nicole. Sure. My name is Nicole Frank. I'm an administrator over in Teaching Innovation and Learning Technologies. So I am actually a student too. I'm, I'm, I'm in the EBS program in Fort Lewis. Um, and I am putting in a proposal at Sakai this year with Gary Anderson, who's a faculty member in AEP. And I've never put in a proposal at Sakai. So I'm just trying to get the gist of what we need to do to put ours in and make sure we have all the T's crossed and the I's dotted, basically. Perfect. Hi, I'm Valerie Brown Kutrov. This is the uh, Fourth week, I've been employed by Fort Hayes in the <laughs> Tilt program with Nicole, and I'm a faculty development specialist with, along with her. And um, she thought it would be really great for me to meet some people and kind of get some ideas. And uh, in case there would come a time, I have a master, two master's degrees from Fort Hayes: one in um, special education and the other one in English. And I will be starting my PhD program at Emporia State in fall of 2018. So. I'm Chris. I know we'll be doing more, much more work together in the near future. <laughs> yes, that's sure. Hi. I'm Judith Karchik. I teach in the music department, and this will be my first year mentoring students on uh, and working with poster presentations at all. So, hoping to learn how to get my students. We don't know, we've never done this. So, what a Sakal presentation is. Wonderful. I'm Brooklyn Bainey. I'm an undergraduate in the nursing program, and I guess I just hope to learn. I'm presenting a poster at this, and I, I have no idea what it is. So. so you're in the undergrad? Are you junior? Yes, junior two. And junior two. So are you here today because you wanted to, or did Kathleen ask you to come? No, we're here. Awesome. Awesome. So you must be in the class too, right? Yes, I'm Wes Lambert, and um, I'm J2 as well, and I just want to now get a better understanding of what it is. <laughs> yeah. Um, Morgan Higgins, undergraduate in the nursing program as well. Um, yeah, I just want to learn more about it. Is that um, what's the question? Um, Maggie Carlene, and just like, you know, very, very good. Very good. We've got a nice group from nursing. Wonderful. Hi. Hi, I'm Kat. I'm from Italy, and I have studied neuroscience and biology. I have a bachelor's degree in uh, biology and a uh, master's degree in neuroscience. And wow. I'm and I'm here because I want to know what the SACAD and to inform me about, yes, university and business. And also to work. Great. Hi. Hi, uh, everyone. And good afternoon. I'm, uh, my name is Bao Tianjun. I'm from China. So far, I'm a business executive in the Department of Teachers Education. So oh. just here, I want to know how to do this kind of things. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Kenya Williams. I am the graduate assistant for the Office of International Student Services. So I'm a HESA grad at Higher Education Student Affairs. And with HESA comes a lot of opportunities to present. Um, so we have the NOTA orientation conference coming up in KIE, uh, Kansas International Educators. So I need some tips and tricks and I've never presented in that capacity before. So I just want to get uh, some good tips to walk away with. Wonderful, wonderful. So you'll like our selling piece, selling piece too at the beginning and end because this is only one in a rollout of presentations. You might enjoy quite a few of them with that background. Hi, 
Hi, welcome. Hi, I'm Cindy Landis. I'm the Library Outreach Specialist here at Forsyth Library. And I'm here because I help organize and put all yes. things on. Yes, have you asked who sent that out? That was Cindy. Oh, Cindy yep. did all that work for us, trying to roll it out for us so that we could let people know to come today. Um, I'm glad the nursing department should, is here. You may wonder why the nursing students and I don't know the nursing students. I apologize, I should have told you that I work mostly graduate level. I do nurse educators in the DMP program, which is nurse practitioners. So I unfortunately don't get to know a whole lot of the undergrads until they come up to the master's level and decide that they want to be a nurse educator, nurse administrator, or a nurse practitioner. All right. Anybody have a burning question they want to start out with? Or just get the show on the road? We'll move on. This is um, an introduction for the 13th, the 13th annual John Heinrich Scholarly and Creative Activities Day. We commonly call, call it SACOD. I would like to acknowledge and thank the SACOD committee. 13 years of rolling this out. Also the Forsyth Library Dean, faculty and staff, including our late that helped us Cindy roll everything out. And I'd like to acknowledge uh, Dr. Arvin Cruz. He was the original pres presenter of this content the last couple of years. This year he kind of handed, handed over the wand and said, please take over. So April 25th, does anybody know what that special day is? It's Sakad. Sakad. <laughs> Woo! Do you want to remember that date? It's Sakad. It's April 25th. It is a Wednesday. So you may wonder, what are we going to do today? Simple, two things. We're going to differentiate empirical and non-empirical research. And we're also going to talk about how do the viewers evaluate the poster? What are they looking for? What's the rubric going to look like? How should I make sure that my poster looks really good and meets the guidelines? And of course, you can't come to class without a pop quiz, right? Pop quiz. So on the first part of your worksheet, top sheet, the first question is uh, SACOD. What does that abbreviation stand for? Anyone want to blur it out? Day. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Now, trick one. What are the poster submissions do? We know I gave you on the last slide that the, the big day is April 25th. What do the posters do? So if you want to submit it to our po our portal so that we can judge it and then get them printed and put them up for Sakad Day, what is that magical day? No fooling. It is April 1st. <laughs> Easy to remember, right? No fooling. April 1st. Uh, next question. Hot. This is a hot topic. Dimensions of the poster. It is no ifs, no ands, no buts. You have to do the dimensions of the poster correct. Why? Free printing. Save you 60, 70 bucks. I know I could save that money and use it for something else. So dimensions. When you ultimately submit your poster, it's going to be on a slide, and you have to have PowerPoint slide with the dimensions of what? Does anyone have any idea? Did anyone do Sakad last year? Nobody, did anyone um, see posters? I know you guys see posters like in the nursing hall, but probably no idea on dimensions, right? And yes, you, you know, a bunch, but I can not tell you. This big by this big. Very, she's pretty darn close. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you exactly the dimensions. They have to be exactly 23 inches high <clears throat> by 35 inches wide. So once again, your poster must be 23 inches high by 35 inches wide, exactly. And so inside your PowerPoint for dimensions, you wanna make sure that those poster dimensions are saved for it. And then last question, I'm gonna read a definition to you. And I want you just to pop up and tell me, am I talking about empirical research, non-empirical, or none of the above? This type of research is comprehensive. It is a careful consolidation of available information within a domain or reinterpretation of that information within a framework or a context. This research does not, capitalized does not, 
use standardized statistical methods to collect the data. Am I speaking of empirical, non-empirical, none of the above? Non-empirical. So how many hands for non? Do I have any uh, hands for empirical? <coughs> Don't trust me necessarily. <laughs> Do I have any? I have no idea. <laughs> Very good. It is actually non-empirical. Very good. So we will talk more about that. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to tell me for sure, hey, Chris, that is non-empirical information, non-empirical research. That's what I'm going to do my poster on, or I'm doing my poster on empirical research. And we are allowed to use non-empirical. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. In fact, when you finally submit that poster, that was supposed to be exactly, I always make sure I say the right dimensions for you guys, exactly 23 inches high by 35 wide. You're going to tell us, is it empirical or not empirical? So that's why this presentation is real important, is to make sure that you submit under the right category. Questions so far? Okay. Now I wanted to make sure that you knew we do have drinks and snacks over there on the side. If you feel like grabbing something to drink, um, a cookie, anything, feel free. It's very informal. Come and go ask questions. No such thing as being rude. Please feel, feel, feel comfortable. It's the afternoon, we're tired, and we're here, here to learn a few extra points. All right. We thought, I thought about giving a two minute introduction, and this would have been a great presentation for you because you're all new to Sakai. And it gave me just the snapshot. It went on for like, I was gonna play it for a minute and 30 seconds to show you what the Sakai looked like. So basically, I have to kind of describe it to you because we can't get the movie to work right in the presentation. It has a play button, but doesn't want to play. Basically, what you can foresee in the near future, on April 25th, you're going to go up into the um, ballroom at the over, over there in Memorial Union. We're going to have posters. We're going to post up posters. The Sakad committee pins them up for you because you submitted them to the print shop. We on that day, you'll come and present from one to three your posters. And basically, we all come undergrads, grads, and faculty to the Memorial Union. We're there together and we talk about research. So we go around the different posters and we look at what other people are doing. We dialogue on it, we learn from each other, we ask each other questions. And then if you're fortunate, you'll be the one that gets the camera. So they'll come up to you and say, hi, I'd like to film you for talking about your project. And then in a couple of minutes, you talk about my project is this. Kind of like that elevator speech what you want to make sure that everybody knows about your project. So someone tell me, why would you want to do that? Why would you want to be a lucky winner to talk about your project for two, three, maybe four minutes? Absolutely. You know a lot of information. You put it together. You're teaching other people. And you got to talk about it. you got to disseminate it. you got to let people know, this is my project. This is what it is. And this is why it matters. So it's real important to show up that day and talk to us. What is your project and why should we care? There's going to be lots of, pro lots of projects there, so you want yours to stand out and be important. You want to be noticed and you want to be heard. Hopefully my throat doesn't get out. Okay, so I apologize about the movie, but if you want to see that little blurb, it is a YouTube video. And if you go to the Fort Hayes homepage, you type in Sakad under the search engine, Sakad, S-A-C-A-D, it'll pop up as a movie presentation that you can actually watch. This one here is a general orientation, but it has undergrad and grad levels for you. When I'm doing something, I always want to know what's in it for me. Why should I care? I gave you my selling, selling piece on you want to teach people about your information but you still may be, ah, I kind of want to do it. I really wouldn't do it if my teacher didn't make me do it. But here's another piece in for you. We invite the community, the community of undergrad and grads to come to Sakad, including faculty and staff, to present their presentations. New this year is oral presentations. So students that are doing a thesis project or a quality improvement project, and they do a great big project. They get IRB approval. They go out there and make change in healthcare settings, in school settings. They gather their data and then they come back and they talk about this is what I did. This is what, what change I made. This is the value of my project. 
oral presentations, that's the new piece that we're doing in this year, in addition to posters and exhibiting creative works. We started that two years ago, because how awesome it is to see these awesome art projects. It's not just posters, and not just talking about your research, but it's looking at art projects, and that will be in the ballroom for you to go through and see those too. All the posters that are submitted using our portal will be either empirical or non-empirical, and posters will be given out awards. There's first, second, and third place, and with it comes money. Money goes to undergrads and grads and faculty. We don't get anything, but undergrads and grads do. I don't know about you, but I could use a hundred bucks. I could, I could definitely find somewhere to spend it. Just a few tips, a few foundational tips that go for everybody. I realize the bulk of us are nursing, but just general tips for everybody in general. We have to make sure we understand the purpose of what we're doing and that the results are related to research scholarly activities. It's pretty wide open with that information. Research and scholarly activities. You have to be true to your academic discipline. Although we have nursing and we have um, biology and we might have somebody from um, mathematics. We have all these different types of disciplines, so your research project will still be true to your discipline. But that's what's neat about the posters, is you can go, about, go around and learn a little bit about a lot of different disciplines, a lot of different topics. We have to be truthful to our resources, always providing credit to the credit that is deserved, including who should be acknowledged. And then respecting your audience. Sometimes someone comes up to you and you're explaining something and they might ask this really weird question and you'll be like, really, are you really asking me that? But try to take a deep breath and think, if they're not from my discipline, they might not understand the basics of what I know, what I knew two or three years ago. So be real respectful of them and, want, and talk to them about their questions. Make them want to learn more about your topic. So let's get to the nitty gritty of the posters, right? We're here to talk about how are we going to do a poster? Are we going to be empirical or are we going to be non empirical? In general, even though these are two different categories of posters, three sections go in for both posters. They will have poster content, they'll have intellectual merit, which we talk about is the idea of your poster, and they'll have communication. This example here was from uh, Dr. Brooke Moore. She's actually a presenter that's going to be presenting next, and I'll give you a list of that for those that want to come back and learn more from these Sakad presentations. But that was her presentation last year, so 2017, and she won faculty prize for non-empirical research. Overall, the posters, no matter if you're empirical or non-empirical, your total is 45 points. So your goal is to get as close to 45 points as you possibly can. And why? Because it's undergrad and grad, non-empirical, empirical, first, second, and third places for both sides, and you get awarded a money accordingly. Last year, to give you an idea, we had 124 poster submissions. So competition is high. And by the way, nursing did win. <laughs> okay, so let's talk a little bit more about posters. They both have, no matter if you're going to do empirical or empirical, some more stuff in common. What is that? Title, remember my catchy title? Have some kind of <coughs> title that grabs the audience. You don't want to have this long, boring statement because you're going to look at that and say, ooh, yee Get something that grabs their attention, makes them stop and want to look at what you're presenting. Authors, primary author, investigators, sometimes your advisor, sometimes I had to put your faculty person on there. Yes? Do they have to put the faculty person on there? They do not. Okay. They do not. So if you're, you, know, you want to talk with your faculty, if, if you're doing it for a class, talk to them about it and find out if you're supposed to have, your teacher will let you know if she wants on there or not. Sometimes they do not want to be on there. They do want to look at your posters and make sure you've got a good good representation you're submitting to Sakad. A lot of times they don't want their name on it because they're doing it as part of their class. They don't want any more acknowledgement other than helping you do a good presentation for that day. Office and institution, wow, a selling bit for Fort Hayes, right? Nice big emblem, woo! And then your abstract. Both types of posters have 250 word abstract telling us about what is the poster. So if you were humanities abstract, for example, you'd have the subject area, 
question, evidence and conclusions. In comparison, the sciences. This is a little bit about what nursing would do, for example. And then compared to the fine arts. People used to tell me, oh, the fine arts, that is so easy. That's just no. Look at what they do. Look at, look at their abstract, all the components of their abstract. And this is just a typical abstract. Abstracts vary, they're individualized, but a typical abstract, if I was the grader looking at it, that's what I would expect to see in that abstract in 250 words. Not two pages. Oh, could you go back to that? Yes. So, and if you, by chance, want a copy of this whole presentation, just let me know. I'll be more than willing to send it to you, okay? It's um, actually compliments of Dr. Arvin Cruz and my little tweaks here and there. And you're more than welcome to any of this. This is open access. Thanks, I got it. Most definitely. Okay, so I talked about those areas that were alike. So we have the title, the author, the abstract, 250 words each. These are a couple more areas. Ideas and communication. So are you doing something original? It might be for nursing, for example. We'd like to talk about um, acuity systems. Do we want nurses to all wear um, uniforms that are alike and how we're gonna wash them? How are we going to decrease um, sepsis alerts? How are we going to change the process of uh, new orientation for nursing? A lot of that is there, but you have to have some different spin on it. How are you making a change that's gonna be valued by that unit? How are you going to put a project together that's gonna to be heard and listened to in order to make a change? You're figuring out all the evidence. You're looking at it, you're coming up with a good idea. Now you wanna present it so that people wanna learn what you're, what you're putting together. Resources. And then communication, aesthetics. People say, oh, beauty doesn't matter. Beauty does matter in these posters. You want them to be eye-catching, you want them to be beautiful, you want them to catch your reader. If it's really, really busy, I'll tend to walk right by. If there's nothing to it, I'm bored and I'll walk right by. It has to be something in the middle. It has to be just right. So you have aesthetics. It's got to be readable. Your font's got to be big enough to read, right? Would you want to read this if my font was this little big? You get tired, right, and leave. Make sure your font is readable and clarity. Make sure that your saying makes a purpose. Make sure you have gone back through and proofread everything so you have a good quality poster. Now some of you say, oh, that's all common sense. It is, but just make sure you double check yourself because I can't tell you how many people make oozes, including me. I've done many posters and had to print it off and double check what it looks like because the, 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 the uh, picture I put in there is not positioned right or the words come out different. My fonts come out all different. You have to double check yourself. Also, as someone I have presented a lot, and um, when you're in the midst of a project, it all makes sense to you. Uh -huh. And then as soon as you send it to someone else, you realize it's, it doesn't. So um, yes. getting a second set of eyes, especially if they're not in your discipline or not involved in the project. Very really good. Excellent, excellent. And like a lot of the nursing students, for example, we get a second eyes because you'll be submitting it to Kathleen and she'll be looking at it and kind of help you. And a lot of you work in teams, and so what makes sense to one, the other person can prove it and make sure it makes sense to them. Very good point. Excellent point. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so that was a big poster. Um, the presenters were Topeka, um, Shauna, and myself. We presented that at Saccade last year. I tend to submit to Saccade every year. And why? You gotta walk the talk, right? If you're gonna talk about how important it is, get your work out there and start doing something, right? So I do every year. Um, and this one actually took second place for Empirical last year, which is pretty freaking amazing when you think about 124 submissions. Now, how many of those are faculty? Probably not very many, but we'll just pretend. <laughs> There's a lot of submissions and we actually got second place. So that's good, yay nursing, right? right? So you can see we have some aesthetics of this. The first question I got was, why did you make it yellow and blue? Yellow was for Fort Hayes, blue was for Hayes Med. We did a quality improvement ch project change for Hayes Medical Center, which happens to be here in Hayes, Kansas. And what we wanted to know is, what were the nurses most stressed about on that unit? And we sent out a survey that was approved by um, the surveyor to use their survey, went through IRB approval. We sent it out to the nurses who participated. We ended up having a 98% response rate, which is phenomenal. Typically, you're gonna have like 38%. And you might say, why, Chris? 
well, we kind of put a plug in for it. Hey guys, can you participate in this? We'd really appreciate it. It was still anonymous, but they felt connected because we made it personal show up. Hey, we're doing this and this is why it matters. And they took the time to do our survey. In response, they told us what was the most significant stress relators for that unit. And why does that matter? There's stress everywhere. What is specific stress for that unit? What matters to that group of people, to that community? Once we found out, then we started implementing improvement projects to help them reduce that stress. The nurses stood up and did projects. Doctors came and talked to them. We changed processes. We worked to change those stresses. Now, where are we at? We're actually in phase two of this project, and we're redeploying the survey and finding out what do the nurses now think of the highest stresses. Our hypothesis is that the original stresses will no longer be and we'll have new stressors. But we'll see. What's important is to continue to evaluate what matters to them, what are you doing to make it better, and did you make an impact, which is the following up piece of it, data collection and analysis. Questions on that one? Oh, yes. Uh, this may come up in next time, but where did you get the pictures and did you have to pay or get permission? Um, I, we actually got them from a free internet site and we download them. And that brings out my an error, for those who didn't know it. You should be at the bottom of these doing, um, I mentioned how you talk about giving the resources credit. The pictures should all have the URLs at the bottom. And we missed that in the original print when we sent it to the print shop. I showed you what we actually did. From then on, we made sure that we put the, the URL at the bottom because you want to make sure that your clipboard is free and that you're not stealing from a source you shouldn't be stealing from or, or borrowing. You, but your intent is pure so you have to let them know where you got it from. Okay. Good question. All right, the heart of the conversation. How are we going to talk about empirical versus non-empirical? So I wanted to dive into empirical first. A lot of you have like an idea what you think empirical is. I think of empirical more like the hard sciences, the hard data collection. So it's research that involves first hand information, the physical sciences fall here, experiences, facts, observations. It's where you have a clearly defined question and you're using standardized statistical methods to analyze your information. It can't be qual or quant research. Some people are head hard fast quant researchers and they say only numbers matter. I'm not. I tend to do mixed methodology, which means a little bit of each, and qual research. And why? Because I'm a nurse. And my nursing background says I need to ask people what matters. And if you talk to people, they'll tell you what matters, and that means qual research. Quant is all looking at numbers. Even the project I just showed you before we did, it's mixed methodology. We asked them for numbers and we asked them why they mattered, and then we followed up with them, we talked to them about it. They get to the heart of things matters, both what they think and what they say. <clears throat> Post your content, get into the heart of that empirical research. What is in that part of it? It has your proposed objectives, brief background, Interesting key definitions. You have to make sure that you have the scientific concepts, the associated systems, and the problematic outcomes. Now for this, you'll see in your, in your handout, that is all kind of typed out for you so you can see it when you go back and look. Most of the nursing research projects are all non-empirical, so you'll like the next section a little bit more. But some of you may be interested in doing empirical research. We have Dr. Arvin Cruz here, and he's definitely an empir empiricist. It will be headstrong in all of that area. So methodology in your empirical research, you'll have like chemicals. If you didn't know, Dr. Arvin Cruz works in chemistry. He has those hard chemicals up there. Glassware, analytical instrumentation, software. You have an experimental procedure and you find out if it's replicable or deterministic in its outcome. When you do something, you always have a result. You always have a, something happens, and then you're going to find out what happened and discuss about. This is what happened in my study, and this is why it matters. Or this is what should be done next time. So report significant findings. So what? Explain how the different findings are in relation to current evidence. Always bring it back to the state of the evidence. The evidence told me this in my lit review. This is what I found out. This is how they mesh together. Tables and graphs and pictures. Do you remember on my, on my example I showed you a little bit ago, how much those pictures 
kind of grab you, you start to look at them, and they start to look at the graphs and the table, you start to look at the information. You need that, those pictures, those tables, and those graphs, they tell a story, they grab your audience so that they come and look at your poster and, and learn more about non-empirical. This is the part that might sting to some of you more, uh, more than nursing students. How far are you guys in the nursing program? Have you started making your posters? Uh, yes. I mean, just with our statements. With your statements. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. And are you guys doing okay with that? Oh, yes. Very good. And how about you guys? Have you done anything like this? Or just, have you got anything developed? Not yet. Did you guys come to the presentation like a week ago, I think it was? Dr. Yes. I saw it, but I didn't come. Okay, very good. And if you didn't want to see it, that's going to be, it'll be put up for you so you can look at it. She talked about how you develop a research question and start to, to figure out what it is that you're talking about. So you take that information and plop it into a poster, which is going to be empirical or non-empirical. Okay, so non-empirical, we now have <coughs> literature review is done there, an extensive literature review. You're synthesizing extensive, extensive literature review for that poster. You're going to have models in there. Some of you might remember Pender's health promotion model. Um, some of you might be uh, familiar with um, community model, health model, biology models. Those are all implemented in, into these posters because the model explains how the process is going to go. It refers back to some model, some theory on how the steps should progress. You have and you're making inferences because the literature tells me this, because the model tells me this, I think this is what's going to happen. Didn't actually do it, but this is what you're proposing. You're making inference. Research involves careful consolidation of that information, and it does not, does not, does not use standardized methods, physical methods. Once you get to that point, you're flipping over into empirical information. So the introduction statement. It's got this proposed objectives. The purpose of my the purpose of the study is this. I aim to do this. You want to be real specific on what it is that you're aiming to do because that part should thread through throughout your whole research poster and it should be addressed in your conclusion or your further discussions. I propose this. This is what I found out. These are my next steps for this. You're going to have a significance related to that data. So, so, the, so what of this? So, so, so what do I take out of this? What should I do because of your research project? And you get, and you want to make sure you have all your key terms and definitions stated up front. Don't use something at the end that you've never used at the beginning because you have to introduce and talk about it. Thread that information throughout your poster in that small poster that you're developing. So, you want to make sure you're using key terms, key pictures, and telling a succinct story. Design and methodology, lit review. Once you get that RQ, your research question. Role of the researcher. So those of you in nursing, have you talked about what your role is going to be for your posters? Are any of you going to be called a PI? So you want to make sure that your role is defined up front and also the role of like Kathleen, um, Mrs. Ward. Hi, welcome. Um, for your presentation. And then ethical considerations. Ethics is really, really important because you want to make sure that you've um, been fair, been fair to all of your subjects. And those of you that are going to actually implement the project, then you're going to go through IRB and you want to be very succinct that you've gone through IRB approval. And then your anticipated limitations of your study. And a lot of those you might say, how am I going to know that, right? It's going to be in your lit review. Your lit review will talk about those present, about those limitations, and you build to deduce that from your literature review, and then following through on your project. So your research findings and conclusions. So then, what did you find? What do you think? What do you think we should take home? What's my take home message after reading your poster? So what? What what change and what value are you going to have because of reading your project? What analysis have you come to? What's your recommendations? And then always provide your references. And for nursing, of course, we're APA. Does anybody else know besides like APA? Some people do MLA. Any MLAs? We go in a hybrid of the two. Hybrid of the two? Yeah. <laughs> it's not so bad. It's not so bad. So it's the same. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to start a little 
project here. And you may wonder who those people are. Those were a picture of the winners from 2017. And as I would mentioned earlier on, that one poster was done with Topeka and Sean and myself. Those picture of them. You see, I'm not in there. I kind of shied away from the camera. But that was a great picture of the bulk of the group. And if you want to see those posters, be sure that you access the repository. When you go to the SACAD site, there's a repository that shows all of these posters from 2017 and 2016 is there too. So you can get a kind of a variety of what did the students do, the winners that the won prizes. So it was undergraduate and grads. It's all empirical and non-empirical. The winners are posted there for you so you can see what their posters look like. I would take a couple and compare and contrast. What speaks to you? What do you like? What do you not like? How can you make your poster good? And with that thought, we're going to use a group I've selected four for you to do today. So I'm asking for this project that you be kind of in groups of two and talk about these posters. Now inside there you'll see um, the first poster that was from the communications department. And so uh, in your packet, what I'm asking you to do is when you look at the poster, tell me if you think it's undergrad or grad. So we have both levels. And then tell me if you think it's empirical or non-empirical. I'm going to give you like about 10 minutes to talk in your group what you think each of those are. And then on each of them you want to talk and figure out what you think that is. Sometimes it's really hard to figure out if it's empirical or non-empirical, but it should be in the description. It should be provided in the poster format. And then sometimes it's hard to figure out if they're undergrad or grads because we have great presentations from both levels. So, we'll see what you think. Yeah. All right. So, I'm just going to ask just in general if you could tell us kind of what you thought on these. So this one is <laughs> rigid endoscopes and clinical swallowing evaluation, current practices and use of practitioners. What do we deduce with this? Is it undergrad or grad? Undergrad. Undergrad. This one kind of was an easy one to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's there for So you want to decide if you want to talk and tell them you're an undergrad or not undergrad. You do have to tell us when you submit in the portal system. But here you have an option. And I'll show you a different one from a Fort Hayes nursing student, how they did it for comparison. And then is this one going to be um, non-empirical, empirical, and can someone tell me why? We think empirical because, because? Because it has stuff like standard deviations and mediums and means. So yeah, sure but they did a process. Yeah. Very good. Standardized methodology. Very good. And you're right. I, um, <clears throat> this was Sierra, and that was her description. And when you guys go up and use the repository, you can have access to all that information. Or if you want my PowerPoint presentation, just let me know and I will send it to you as a PDF and you can look at it. All right. Yay, nursing, huh? <laughs> so what was this one? You guys see how she identifies themselves? They do it in teams. They do teams. They are Fort Hayes nursing students. That is specific to the nursing department. So if I was to read that, I would know who it was, but if a stranger looked at it, they would be like, who is that, right? <coughs> but in the portal, we would have had to submit it as empirical, non-empirical, undergrad, or undergrad, graduate or undergrad, so they would have, the, re the rubric recruiter, the evaluator, would have known from that information. So the outcome of this study, we know it's undergrad. Is it empirical, non-empirical? Non-empirical, can you tell me why? Talk about the results and findings. Very good. So she went through and read through all of it and deduced from, from how she did her summative finding using lit review that it was non empirical. Very good. Very good. Uh, chemical analysis of local Kansas clay and use in ceramic art. Wow, huh? Remember that abstract we looked at the very beginning? All that content that would have went into that one? Anybody deduce this one? <laughs> Undergrad or grad? Undergrad or grad? Oh, really? <laughs> well, thank you. And then it became a non empirical. Very good. And the answer to that. And this one, you can't really see very good on my presentation, but you can in your PowerPoint. Um, in your handout, what was this one? Undergrad or grad? And was it empirical or non empirical? Empirical. Look at all of this evidence in here. Look at all these, this graphing that they did to pull you in and help them really learn this topic. She did a great introduction. Ariel Snyder, Darren White, Riddell, and William Stark. They have a detailed 
detailed methodology section. Now, are there any cons to this presentation, this poster that you might tell me you like or didn't like? It's busy, very good. So you might want to think about, do I want that much information? Do I not? It's a personal choice. It's how you present, how you communicate on your poster, your aesthetical piece of it. And then also, your findings, how much you need to be on there. How much, how much of my story do I need to tell so that my viewer understands my story, will appreciate my poster, that they learn something from my project. It becomes very personable um, information. It goes some from what your teacher, if your teacher's telling you to do it, some from the examples that we have up in the repository, and some just going to be, I like it this way, that's what I'm going to do. And you submit it, and it's your work of art. Yes? I don't think I clearly understand how the machines are working in undergrad and graduate. I got the empirical number, but I don't think I know how to. That's actually a good point. It's hard to distinguish between undergrad and grad. It's very hard. You know how I figured out, because I ended up being a, 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 a truth story here. I end up being a, a Sakad poster <laughs> viewer. I don't do nursing because I would, I would give you guys all 45, right? <laughs> I don't do nursing, but I do end up doing them. I'm, I'm supposed to be blind, so I'm not supposed to know who it's from. But I tell you, they're not nursing from the stuff that's on the posters. But I can't necessarily check for undergrad or grad because why? They're excellent posters. They do excellent jobs. They have excellent teachers. They put their heart and soul into writing these posters. It's very hard. The reason I know as a viewer is because it's put in the portal system. You tell me if you're undergrad or grad, and it comes to me as undergrad or grad. But they do excellent work. It is hard to tell. Very hard to tell. All right. Okay, so on that piece, I just wanted to give you another plug towards the portal as we conclude. So, when was our poster? When was our poster due by? April Fool's, no fooling around. What was our poster dimensions? 23 by 35. And they had to be exactly that because? Free printing. Free printing. It'll save you 60, 70 bucks. I'm all game for that, right? Save 60, 70 bucks plus win 100 bucks, right? So when you submit to the portal, this one you can't really see. I'm going to go to the next slide because this just shows you a snapshot of what the big portal looks like. You are doing a portal that we actually have. Leslie Page and her department leads that. You will have, I'm going to come over here. I had a fancy pointer somewhere, but I've misplaced it. So, applicant's name, first name, last name, email address. It must be your Fort Hayes email address, please. And it must be correct. Make sure, don't check that you put your email in correctly. Phone number. Sometimes we do have to call you about something, and we need to be able to be able to access you. Cell phones are usually most applicable. Oh, thank you, Andy. And cell phones are most applicable because of being able to actually reach you and talk to you if we have an issue. Primary organizations automatically Fort Hayes. Co-investigator, student's name, faculty mentors, if they wanted to have their name put in there. Poster type, when you're talking about your type, then your um, undergrad and grad. And, and do you remember poster type? Is that non oh, I'm sorry, type has got to be empirical or non-empirical. And then your category is going to be undergrad or grad. There's a section that's called Other. It's not you guys. <laughs> other, <laughs> please don't do that. That's for like alumni, other associates of Fort Hayes University that are not actually grad or undergrad or faculty. Faculty even have our own little tab for us too. It's, it, we're not others either. Okay. And here I want to make sure that you saw this part up here. Talks about details. When you go into this portal system, we open it up <laughs> for you March 1st. We close it down April 1st. So that whole month you can access this information. Directions for formatting and submitting your posters are right there, same stuff we're talking about today. Overview, scoring rubrics. Remember, the best you can do is 45. Shoot for that 45. Templates, if you want to use a template. Class instructors provide you usually a template too. I've showed you different ones of three and four columns. And then how to make your poster in a PowerPoint. We have presentations up there to help you. You need a little bit more coaching on how do I put this all together. You saw some ideas. The next leap is actually applying it into a poster, making it look good, making it be what you want it to say for the science and art of your specific discipline. All right. Remember, how big was your abstract? 200. 250 words. Exactly. It's going in here for us. And then here, do you want your poster printed? Yes or no? <laughs> you may say, that's a really dumb question, Chris. What's the purpose of that? You could tell us no. 
And the reason you would tell us no is because you already had it printed in a dimensions of 60 by 60 or something. There's some, some oddball, sort of oddball presentation because you went did it for biology, or you did it for communication, you did it for some other discipline. Now you just want to come and put it up and show us. So your poster printing would be no, but you're still submitting it in here. Why? Anybody tell me why you'd still put it up here? Yes, exactly. Woohoo! Nicole gets the answer. Because if you want us to look at it and judge it and put you into the book of having um, <clears throat> published this poster, you've got to put it into the portal so we can acknowledge you. And then it's going to go out to reviewers and we're going to judge you on that scale. Remember first, second, and third places, undergrad and grad, empirical and non-empirical. Lots of winners to win the money. If you don't submit it, we can't see it, we can't judge it, you're out. Now, if you did that, you could still do that. You might say, oh, I don't want no money. I don't want a, I don't want a ribbon. I don't want any of that stuff. That's OK. You can Yeah, I know. <laughs> She's not going to do that. But if you did, then you can still bring your poster that day. We can still put it up. It's just not going to be evaluated. All right. And this was just to make sure you remember to put in the correct email for it. So what's coming, and I believe Andy wanted to give you another plug for the next piece is going to be creating a research poster presentation. Dr. Brooke Moore is going to talk to you about putting it actually together. So we talked about pieces. What is empirical? What is not empirical? How, what are, what's my RQ going to be? How am I going to put that? Now you're going to get the specifics of application. And Dr. Brooke Moore is going to do that. Do you remember her poster presentation was one that blue one I showed you at the very beginning? That was hers. So she's actually done it. She's walking the talk, talking the walk. Creating a research poster workshop, presentation, how do you do it, workshop, let's get in there and do it nitty gritty, let's get together and talk about it, let's show each other, let's teach each other, let's practice. Giving oral presentations, the good, the bad, remember you have to sit, be by your poster and talk about it? You want to be prepared to give that three to five minute elevator speech. When I come up and ask you, so what is the history, what is the deal with your poster? You can talk to me about your poster, you want to be prepared, you want to be comfortable, you want to be presented professionally, you want to be ready to talk about it your poster. You've, you've done all the information, you've done the research, now teach me your presentation. And then etiquette. Proper communication, what's going to happen that day so that hopefully we can come up and film you and you can read that presentation that we put in for next year that says these are our winners, these are our speakers, this is what they learned, this is what they have to share, this is how you do it. Alright, any questions? And this is all my saying I always tell my students in my classes. Questions are guaranteed in life, answers aren't, but I'll certainly try. Any questions? I have one. Yes. Um, so her daughter was sitting here, one thing that occurred to her, I told her the, the idea of part of coming was that maybe we could do something for next year. Because huh? she just started um, 16th and um, using some feedback research or survey research um, from faculty about development needs and then putting something into place. She was wondering, because we're, we're setting up this matrix of faculty development plan, about a new informational poster this year. Uh -huh. Would you advise doing that? Or would absolutely, it be? absolutely. She wants to know, she doesn't really, she's never really done it before, she has some information. Well, absolutely. Do it as a non-empirical and do it. The hardest part about doing these research posters is getting started. You think, oh, I don't really have anything very good. I'm going to do it next year. Oh. Next year comes around, oh, I'm still not really ready to do it. I'll do it next year. So you don't have to have done the research project? Because I no. just don't want, I don't want someone to walk by our poster and say, did they not understand what they were supposed to do here? <laughs> no, 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 no. You're non-empirical. You're non-empirical. Lay it out. You're still going to think all that through. And you can lay down a non-empirical research study. And then think about maybe you want to make it empirical the next year. This is a great study. I understand. This is what I want to do. This is what I'm hypothesizing. This is my IQ. Then think about actually deploying it. Go through IRB and deploy it. It'll be a great project. Great project. You all start somewhere. It's just getting started. And don't think you're not good enough because you are good enough. We all start somewhere. Honest. Any other questions? The 12th annual John Heinrich Scholarly and Creative Activities Day was hosted on April 26, 2017 in the Memorial Union and Black and Gold Ballrooms. This is an annual celebration of research, scholarship, and creative activities featuring undergraduate and graduate students as well as faculty who presented their posters and creative works. 
Presenters represented all colleges and many different departments from across the university. Some of the students agreed to explain their research to us. Hi, my name is Anna Otter, and this is Sharita Schwartz, and we are both undergraduate students at Florida State University in the Department of Nursing. This is our poster. It's Pinterest for Pregnancy. What it is, is we have 30 participants. We have 15 that are using Pinterest as an educational tool, and the other 15 using normal resources. And the moms are required to look at a Pinterest board three times a week for one hour that is regulated by me and Sharita. And we use snowball effect to get the mothers. And the outcome is we believe that Pinterest will have a positive correlation on the knowledge levels of the um, My project was herbivory preferences among ecotypes of Inglisim. An ecotype is referred to genetically distinct individuals within the same species. Like these here are all big bluestem plants, but because they were grown in different places, they're adapted to different environmental conditions. Like these grown in Illinois receive a lot more rainfall than those grown in central Kansas. And as a result, they tend to be bigger amongst some other differences. And I was looking at a sort of trade-off existing between drought tolerance and herbivory tolerance. Um, I predicted that those grown in the wetter conditions would have more tannins or an herbivore deterrent. And so the leaves grown in the drier conditions would be uh, preferred more by the herbivores. So I took scans of leaves before and after herbivory trials, did random pixel counts after the herbivory trials to see which leaves were eaten more. And I did the herbivory trials by putting two leaves from two different ecotypes in jars with grasshoppers. And I checked them after two days. And then I also looked at tannin concentration by doing some dilutions and crushing up some leaves, really fun stuff. Then I ran them in a spectrophotometer to see the tannin concentration. And though I predicted that the wetter leaves would have more tannins, I actually found the opposite. So that was kind of interesting. And I found that the grasshoppers did display a preference for the paw ecotype. So there is a preference being displayed, but tannins are not the reason why. So hopefully next year I'll figure out what's stopping the preference. In addition to the research posters, an art exhibit was hosted in the black and gold room next to the ballroom. Empirical and non-empirical scientific and scholarly posters were selected by judges, and those winners were presented with awards at the end of the day. Mark your calendars for April 25th, 2018 for the 13th annual John Heinrich Scholarly and Creative Activities Day. For more information, contact the Office of Scholarship and Sponsored Projects at 785-628-4349.